Ladies and gentlemen, good evening, good evening, good evening. I am your host, Garfield Waller. Welcome to another episode of Rock the Mic. This evening, I am excited, very excited, and a little bit nervous because of the guest I have. This evening, the gentleman I have, he basically needs no introduction. He basically needs no introduction. This man has risen from the depths of poverty all the way to the top. So, ladies and gentlemen, I have for you this evening a gentleman who was the former president of the Senate. He is CARICOM's Rapporteur for Disabilities, and he was recently appointed to the United Nations Committee for People with Disabilities. This man has been in politics for over 20 years, and like I said, he has risen through the ranks like a meteor. So, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to welcome Senator Dr. Floyd Morris. Okay, Floyd, how are you doing, sir? Not too bad, too bad, too bad, too bad, too bad. How is everything? Okay. <laughs> long, I'm glad. Long yeah, long, long time. I'm glad you could take time out of your busy schedule to talk to me, man. I appreciate it. I no, appreciate no, no, it. What's your extended invitation, man? I appreciate it. That's the sausage in charge. <laughs> you, remember, you remember the name, huh? <laughs> All right. For those who don't know, guys, Dr. Floyd Morris, Senator Dr. Floyd Morris is from St. Mary. And we, we we go a little ways back. So, Floyd, would you mind telling that? Can I call you Floyd, sir? Or do I have to go St. All right, true. True. So, can you tell us a little bit about your childhood? Because people want to know. I mean, you've written books and everything, but for those who have not read your books, can you give us a little insight? Where you were born, how you grew up, stuff like that? All right, all right. But I, 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 I was born, born in, in a little, a little community, community called, called Dale, 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 which is, which is between, between Free Hill, Free Hill and, and Maria. Maria. And, and that, that is where, where Port Maria, Port Maria Secondary, secondary. Uh, now... now I think, I it's, think Grimavale, it's Grimavale High School, High School. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I went to the Mar 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 primary school. My mother, My mother is a community, community activist, activist. Uh, uh, Jimmy Price, and her sister, sister Dean. Dean. And, and I have, I have my, brothers. my brothers. Uh, uh, I, have I have five, five brothers, three sisters. sisters, and. and uh, the most, the most popular, popular of them is, is probably, probably Julia Dimas, Dimas. Conrad Rockney. <laughs> the Rockney chicken, right? <laughs> the Rockney <rough> chicken. <laughs> and, uh, I, I, I grew up in a very humble family background, background. You, know, you know, because my mother was a dressmaker, dressmaker and, and my father was a fireman. He migrated to Canada, Canada in 1978. And so, and so it was, it was my mother who had, had the responsibility of growing, growing me, me. You, know, you know, and, and uh, I, went I went to Port Mara Mara Primary School, school. And, and, and that, that, that that's, that's, where that's where I had, I had a close, close interaction, interaction with your, your, your wife, your wife. Um, mm -hmm. because, because even, even though we came from, from the same, same community of Bailey's Bay, uh -huh. she, she taught at Mora Primary School, and of course, of course as, as a teacher, teacher from, the from the community, she looked all for us from the from community, community, you know? Community, you know? Okay. And, and so, so I knew, I knew Marcia, Marcia very well, very well from, from those days. days. Uh, uh, I was, at primary school, I was in her class, uh -huh. skip, skip, uh, I went to Great War. war. Uh, a, 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 gentleman a gentleman by the name of Mr. Stott here. there. Okay, then good. Then in Great War, I was, was by Miss Jenna Rose Bryan. And then, and then I, went I went to, to Great, great six, six in Miss Morgan's, Morgan's class. Miss Morgan, Daisy Morgan, right? Daisy Morgan. <laughs> Who is, who is still, still alive, alive but batting, batting well at 105, 105, 105 in the wow. Manchester. Manchester. Wow, that you was know, She I, was I a just, supreme educator. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes man, man. I just, just ensured that, sure that she got her vaccine the other, the other day, day, you know, you know because, because she's doing, doing extremely well, well 
still, still doing, doing our crossword puzzle with our agonies at 105. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Miss Morgan, that lady yeah, was, yeah. Uh, they don't make them like that anymore. They don't make them like her anymore. Absolutely. <laughs> so, Absolutely. you ended up going to St. Mary High, right? Yes, yes, I, I passed, passed common, common entrance, entrance uh -huh. in, in 1991. And, and went, went to St. Mary, Mary High School. High school. And, and whilst, whilst I was, I was there, there, I, I met, met your, your brother, brother uh -huh. Harry, Harry, because, because okay. Harry was, was my senior. senior. <laughs> uh, 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 he was in the cadet. I was, I was in the cadet. I was a, a stout man. man. Oh, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. um, but but because, because we, we all hail from this you know, we either... Take, take uh, 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 took another queen, queen in the morning. morning. Right, another queen. <laughs> our Mr. Jagai bus. Other high gate. You know? So, so we, we had a good interaction. Interaction, interaction yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, from, um, from those, those days as well. As well. Uh, uh, it was once very high. high. Uh -huh. In, in grade, grade nine. nine. That, that I started, started developing, developing the side problems. Problem. Side problems, okay. You know, you know uh, I, went I went to school, school and found out that, that I couldn't see, see the blackboard black as, as clearly, clearly as, as I used, used to in grade, in grade seven, seven and eight. eight. And then, and they, then they recommended that, that I had to go to, go to the, the optometrist, optometrist to, to Really, really examine the eyes. eyes. So wait, let me ask you something, Senator. While this was happening, when you realized that you couldn't really see the board properly, what was going through your mind? What went through your mind? Well, well, I, I, I just thought it was a, a, a refractive error, error that, that could be corrected. Be corrected. I, wasn't I wasn't anticipating blindness, blindness at all. At all. Yeah. Because... because that is, that is the furthest, furthest thing, furthest thing from a teenager's mind, right? <laughs> you know, you know uh, and everybody, everybody fingered blindness. blindness. So, so by, the by the time I got, I got to the, the optometrist and, and mm -hmm. examined, examined the, the eyes, they realized, they realized that something, something was, wrong. was wrong. And they, and they recommended, recommended to the, the university hospital, hospital to do, to do some, some examination, examination, further, further examination. examination. Uh -huh. And while I was, I was at the university, it was, it there, was there that they discovered that, that I had the dreaded, dreaded eye disease, disease uh, glaucoma. glaucoma. Okay. And, and the, the, the doctor, doctor told, told me that, that it was, it the, was first the first time, time they, were they were discovering glaucoma in a young person. And if, if the, the pressure in the eye, eye was, was controlled, controlled mm -hmm. then... then I, I would uh, end up being, being black. black. Wow, Jesus. And we did, we did what, what we could, could at, at the time. time. You know, you getting, know, getting med medication. Mm -hmm. I did, I did uh, a, laser a laser surgery on, on the eye to drain the, the fluid. fluid. The fluid uh -huh. but, but the side, the side kept, kept on, on deteriorating. deteriorating. Okay. Right, right. And then, and then I continued... I continued I'm I'm my sojourn at high school. school. You know, you know I went to grade 10. 10 and and uh, I performed normally. normally. And, and by, by the, the time, time I reached grade, grade 11, 11, the site, the site had deteriorated significantly, significantly to, the, to the, point the point where I could, I could see, see what was being written, written on, the on the blackboard. You know? You know? Mm -hmm. And I ended, I ended up Failing all, all my TXC exams, exams that, that I did, I did in 1986. Okay. So, so I graduated, graduated from St. Mary High School, high school without, without, without a single academic, academic subject. subject. A single academic subject. Wow. You know? You know? For most uh, people, that would have been the end of the world, right? Uh, absolutely. 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 And so, and so I, left I left there, there not, not knowing, knowing what the future, future would be. be. I was... I was Confined, confined to home at Bailey'sville, mm -hmm. uh, just, just waiting for the moment. The moment to come. I mean, I, 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 at, at that, that point in time, I was just concentrating on, on preserving what I had left. What was left? Uh -huh. and, and you know, you know it, it was, was not, not to be. be. 
the, the, the dreaded, dreaded moment, moment came in 1989, which was, was the last, last time, time I saw, I saw what, what the world, world looked like. like. Wow. You know, I mean, I mean the, the site went, went totally, totally in, in 1989. But that must have been traumatic, or were you, like I said, mentally preparing for that? Well, well the part, part of the matter, matter is, is that there was, was a gradual, gradual mm -hmm. deterioration. And so, and so it, it was sudden. So, so you would have, would have been pretty deep for the transition. transition. But, but nevertheless, it, it was, was still, still traumatic. traumatic. I can imagine. Mm -hmm. Because here, here I was, I was in, in the prime of my life. life. I, couldn't I couldn't get, get to, to, to the, the cricket, cricket to play, to play cricket, cricket with my peers anymore. I couldn't, couldn't play, play football, football anymore. anymore. You know, you know no marbles could be played. <laughs> okay. you, know? you know? So, so all, all of that just, just went. went. And... and uh, I mean, I, mean, I, was, I was depressed. depressed. I'm, I'm not going to tell you that I was suicidal because, because while those, those thoughts, thoughts came, came to me, me it, it was not an option. option. It was an option because I believe, I believe that, that there's, there's always hope, hope, you know? You know? And, and so, so I decided that, that I was going to fight it out irrespective of what was the situation. situation. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, so, so I, was I was there, there at, home, at home in, in Bailesville until, until about 1991. Uh, <laughs> what, what happened is that I, I had some, some information about the Society for the Blind. Society for the Blind, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and and uh, what, what they, they could do to me as, as a blind person. person. And, and uh, I had, had a discussion, discussion with, with them. them. And then and they told me of, of things, things that, that they, they could do me as, as a blind person. Mm -hmm. but, but at that time, I never, I never had financial resources, resources to leave the area. area. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. So, you know, you know I, I started, started on the uh, small, small poultry business uh, uh, to raise some mm -hmm. down mm -hmm. there. And, and uh, after, after I accumulated sufficient resources, I decided, I decided that, that I, was I was going, going to, to leave, leave Kingston, Kingston to, okay. to start, start my rehabilitation and orientation at the, the Jamaica Society for the Blind. Oh, okay. So, while, while I was at the Jamaica, Jamaica Society for the Blind, the blind I, saw I saw what all these, these persons, persons were doing. doing. I mean, I, mean, I, I saw, saw blind, blind persons going, going to the university. I saw blind persons go to work. I saw, I saw blind, blind persons making contribution to, to the Jamaican, Jamaican society. society. Mm -hmm. And I said, boy, I, I can, can do this too. <laughs> you know? You know? Um, but, but how, how would I, I do that, that mm -hmm. when, when I, I had graduated from high school, high school mm -hmm. without, without, without a single, single, without without a single subject? Mm -hmm. so, what so what I did was, was to restart my... my Education, education at, at Michael Evening, Evening College. College. Okay. Yep, yep. So we have, remember, we have one more link. Primary school, <laughs> Mary <laughs> Zai, and Michael. Okay, good. <laughs> absolutely. 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 But, you but you know, know before, before I went, I went to Michael, Michael I, tried I tried to get, to get into the Evening, Evening College, College at Campion mm. College. And, and they, they, they rejected me on the basis, basis that, that, you know, you know I, I have, have a disability. And... and I would, I would be, be able, able to, to keep pace with, with their students, students that the are students, there. Okay. You, know, you know, so, so I was, I was down, down to that, that and then I, I went to back to evening college, college where, where I did, I did my, my whole and and level subject. subject. Uh -huh. uh, over, over a two-year two year period, period, I did seven, seven subjects, subjects, five GCE, okay. and two, two A levels. levels. So, so I was, I was successful in, in all, all of those, and, and was, was now qualified, qualified to go to, go to university. university. I had, I had the, option the option of going, of going on, on the full-time full -time program, program at Michael, Michael. But, but I decided, I decided that, that I was going, going to go to the University, University of the West Indies because, because I wanted to do a degree 
in media, media and, and, and community. community. Wait, hold on a minute, Senator. I have some guests, some guests who are saying there's an echo coming from your side. Is there any other electronic thing on in your room at the moment? Uh, uh, they said no. there's, an e there's an echo when you speak. Um, um, no, not, not at all. all. Not at all. Because I don't hear, I don't hear an echo, but the the viewers are saying there. Are you watching? Is anybody in the room watching Facebook? Um, I don't, I don't know, know my wife is. is, is, is my she wife is because I don't know where that feedback is coming from. Anyway, let's go on. So, yeah, you can continue, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so, so I went, I went to, to the University of the West, West Indies in 1993. Okay. And, and that's, that's where, where I, I did my, my first, first degree, degree in, in media, media and communication. communication. So, so it, it was difficult, difficult because, because I, never I never had financial, financial resources, resources uh -huh. to, to pay, pay for, for the degree, degree at the time. time. So, so I had, I had to get assistance from, from some, some individuals, individuals and, and the, the Shirley families who they were connected to Michael and, and that I okay. was so, just yep. me mm -hmm. while I was, I was there. there. And they, and they gave, gave me some, some assistance, assistance as well. And then I went to uh, Taylor Hall um, on the university campus, campus uh -huh. where I did my, um, wh where I resided. And it was a tremendous experience there on Taylor you know. Hall, <laughs> you know, because that this is where I, I, I say I got a new lease on life, you know, because <laughs> all the students were very supportive. They put in place a number of systems to give me support. To give you the help. Mm -hmm. Ensure that I went to class on time, to ensure that I wow. was mm -hmm. uh, doing my assignments and reading and writing for me and all of that. I mean, it was a tremendous support network that was there on uh, Taylor Hall. And okay. I mean, I got involved with um, student politics there on the campus and was elected as deputy hall chairman for the hall and was involved with several other activities um, on, the, on, on, on the university campus. Yeah. All right, hold um, on a minute there, Senator. Hold it right there. Once you mention the word politics, I have to get in. Yes. Now, was there, and I know a little bit about your youth growing up, was there any chance that you would have been anything else other than a PNP person, a PNP supporter? Was there any chance? The, the, the possibilities were very slim <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, my mother, my yeah. mother, uh, as I said, <laughs> is... <laughs> what you would call in Baileysville the PNP donkey. Uh, <laughs> you remember, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so, and so, that sort of socialization and oh. exposure would have prepared me for oh. uh, national politics. You know, oh, because okay. I tell people all the time that from as far back as in the early 1980s, I remember in the 1980 election, my mother had me writing up voters' guide whenever she went out and did her canvas yep. <laughs> and came back home. You know, I was there uh, helping her to write up uh, the voters' guide because I had a very good penmanship. Uh -huh. And so, you know, she utilized that skill uh, from that early age. From that early so, age. I was exposed to the fineries of her political uh, uh, campaigning strategies. And so by the time I reached the University of the West Indies, I was exposed to uh, 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 politics from a theoretical standpoint. Oh boy, okay. Mm -hmm. So I was able to merge the theory with the practice based on my socialization. So when Professor Trevor Monroe was lecturing and talking about political socialization, political mm -hmm. behavior, and political culture, 
all of that resonated with me because yeah, yeah. I had lived it. You had lived it. All right. Senator, I'm gonna I'm gonna mention a few names and I wanna I want you to tell me what did these people mean to you? Mm -hmm. What did these people mean to you? If I say Horace Clark, what would you say? Well, Horace Clark is my political godfather. I mean, Horace Clark was uh, one of those individuals who was extremely supportive of me once he realized what had happened to me in terms of my blindness. Mm -hmm. He gave me all the support that he could. Um, and especially when I went to the University of the West Indies. And he never just only gave me the support. He brought me back to uh, St. Mary to assist in a number of ways at St. Mary High School in terms of motivational sessions and so forth. And I ended up assisting with coaching the debating team right. at St. Mary High between 1997 and, uh, and 2000. All right. So, let, me mention another, let me mention another name. P.J. Patterson. Uh, absolutely, that's the boss, because he uh, brought me into uh, the Senate in 1998. Mm -hmm. That is where I got a national voice to express my views on different issues, mm -hmm. primarily as it relates to persons with uh, disabilities. Disabilities. Okay. What about Portia Simpson? That's the queen of politics in Jamaica. And Portia um, is my very good friend. Um, and even today, we still have a, a very good uh, relationship. Mm -hmm. And she, uh, I was reappointed to the Senate in 2012. And she promoted me to um, the president of the Senate in 2013. Uh, that is when I became the first blind person to have <laughs> occupied that position in the country. And I leave the big name for last. This man might be one of the most polarizing people in Jamaican politics. Michael Manley. What is, uh, what is uh, Joshua. Joshua. Uh, def definitely, I have to give thanks to uh, Michael Manley and the policies um, that he implemented in the 1970s, for example, because it was during that era, for example, free education was right. executed and gave us as poor, humble Jamaicans an opportunity to venture into uh, tertiary education. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and that is what uh, Professor Rex Netterford said, started this modification of a lot of Jamaicans mm -hmm. because we got the opportunity to become professionals in our own right. In your own right. And I have to give uh, thanks and credit to Joshua for that. Uh, Joshua. All right. No. Re I'm going to ask some questions which may, I don't know how you're going to answer these because this was supposed to be a little chummy, chummy, nice sit down. But since you're such an honest man and open and forthright and forthcoming, let me see if you'll answer these. Listen. In the last general elections, last general election, mm -hmm. how would you categorize it? Was it a JLP victory or a PNP loss? How well, would you well, the PNP threw away the election because. Why would you say that? The PNP threw away the election because of the deep internal rifts that mm -hmm. were associated with the um, political organization. The the, the 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 party was split into basically two camps, one uh, what you call the risers and the, and the other, the one uh, PNP. And uh, in, in any political organization um, or any political process, you're not going to have the electorate electing uh, a divided political divided. party. Okay. You know, they want a party that is united or at least there is the perception of unity amongst the, um, the, the, the members. And the, 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 the division was deep. It was quite obvious in the, in the public space. Mm -hmm. And so what you end up seeing is a situation where a lot of uh, PNP supporters uh, stayed home, over 129,000 
individuals who supported the party in the 90 in in the 2016 election mm -hmm. never came out and voted and uh, you know the results are what they are you know uh, it was uh, the most crushing defeat for yeah. us mm -hmm. in the last 20 or so years all right so with this new with this new leader do you think those rifts can be healed by the for the over the next four years do you think you'll fear better well, you know, I mean, I am hopeful. I am hoping that it happens because the truth is that if 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 we are going to be competitive, we have to solve the uh, internal divisions to make sure that we are able to uh, successfully challenge in future uh, national elections. And uh, I am I I am still hopeful. I. You're still hopeful. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. You know, we live in hope. You know, um, the the fact of the matter, the 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 current leader is somebody who is very skillful in terms of his uh, qualifications. Um, is somebody who I have a lot of regard for, and he has been very successful in his own right as a business person. And we hope that all of that skill set can redound to the benefit of the party and it's just for everybody to come together and to make sure that they will work with them no individual is perfect but you know you have to work with the imperfections and to make sure that we come out um as a unified team all right the big thing the big thing around now is this pandemic COVID. how do you view the government, the present government, how you, do you see their handling of this disease? Is it up to scratch or is there a lot that leaves to be desired or how would you categorize this? Well, I, I believe that in the early stages of the pandemic, uh, say up to August 2020, the government did an excellent job in terms of managing the COVID pandemic. I mean, no one could fault the government uh, in terms of the way how they kept the thing tight up yeah. until um, the um, August last year. But after the announcement of the election, uh, the, the, the thing started to show some cracks and uh, you know uh, we went into the elections and after the election the thing exploded you know um to the point where we are now at 48000 individuals who have uh, uh contracted the covid disease um with over 900 individuals dead. If you look at the data prior to um, the elections last year, we had below 600 individuals, 600 cases of COVID prior um, uh, to the election last year. So when, 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 you, when you look at how the situation was managed pre-COVID versus post-COVID, and you look at the data, you see that something has gone wrong after the after the, uh, after the um, elections, right? And, uh, and 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 to and to make go ahead. You seem to have been frozen. But we'll still keep going on, ladies and gentlemen. We seem to be having a little problem with the senators. It's worse, we have had us. Yes, go ahead. Okay, so I was I, I I don't know where we got cut off uh there, but I was just giving some data as it relates to mm -hmm. what happened with the uh COVID pandemic uh prior to the election, where there was about six hundred cases. And after the election, we are now at 48,000. And I was moving on to point out that another 
troubling situation that we are having is with the uh, COVID, the vaccines. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because uh, thus far, we have only been able to vaccinate below um, 200,000 of our citizens. And a part of that is that we have been struggling to get um, vaccines purchased on the international market. And I think we should have been a bit more proactive mm -hmm. in terms of trying to get in the line early rather than depending solely on the COVAX facility from the WHO okay. to try and get other sources because we should have anticipated that there was going to be a rush uh, for vaccine. And what the, the, the developed countries have done is to uh, use their strength of cash to uh, sort of hog the process oh, really? <laughs> and, 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 and preventing um, smaller countries from getting in. But I believe that if we were a bit more proactive in the early stages, we would have gotten some more of the vaccine than, than what we have uh, currently. So, you know, I think that, you know, so, some issues could have been dealt with uh, differently. Mm -hmm. And then there, there, there are some, some constitutional questions about how the process has been handled. Um, because right now it, there is a challenge of the constitutionality of the disaster risk management orders. Okay. Uh, versus whether we should have used section uh, 22 of uh, or 23 of the constitution, or don't remember the exact section. Can you elaborate but, on that for those of us who don't know? Okay, what happened, the, the, the constitution mm -hmm. allows for the government uh, to declare a state of uh, public e emergency in a uh, case of um, a health uh, pandemic. Uh -huh. And um, in that, it would have given them the ability to suspend certain rights and freedoms. Okay. And it is only the constitution only the constitutional mechanism that can suspend the rights and freedoms of citizens, citizens. not a, a specific legislation. It has to be done within the context of the constitution. The constitution and yeah. take, for example, right now, you have a religious grouping that has taken the, the, the government to court about the violation of their religious rights mm -hmm. because they uh, deem their uh, um, the, the violation of their right freedom to worship under the dis disaster risk management orders mm -hmm. as unconstitutional, and that is being challenged in the courts by the court. okay. by mm -hmm. that group at this moment. You know, so those are some of the issues that are. Uh, um, there are questions about how they are handled and if they could have been handled uh, differently, you know. But I believe that uh, as a country, we have to make sure that we do everything that is in our powers, oh, okay. both on, on the side of government and citizens, to deal with this pandemic because... The pandemic is not looking out for individuals who are wearing green versus <laughs> those who are wearing orange. Yes, you know? on, that, on that matter, how would you how would you assess the reaction of the population to all these rules and regulations? For example, the curfews. Do you give them a passing grade or failing grade? Do you think our population responded well or what? Um. In some instance, in this latter instance here, mm -hmm. uh, they have responded uh, very well because, you know, um, we have seen a downward trajectory mm -hmm. of the um, positivity rate 
So, for example, and I as a social scientist, I love to use data to justify right. my, my arguments. Um, in, in the last wave, we went up to as high as about 50% positivity rate. But uh, since the um, latest measures have been implemented by the government, we have seen it gone down to below uh 10 percent there about okay. which suggests that the citizens are responding to uh the measures although you know i mean there are instances of yep. indiscipline mm -hmm. where people are not wearing uh their mask right. and people are having parties uh in diverse places they go to the rivers they go to <laughs> all of those places yep. to party because you know jamaica is a place of parties you know i mean yeah. mm -hmm. everybody wants to enjoy themselves but people have to understand That's that not. at this time we are in a war against an enemy that you don't know when he's going to come and hit you so you have to make sure that you prepare and take care of yourself at all times, you know? All right. All right. Yeah. Let me, another thing. With the government's response, how do you think they responded to the needs of people with disabilities in regards to COVID? Do you think it was good enough or non-existent? That's, that's a vexing issue among the community of persons mm -hmm. with disabilities because, you know... Um, Take, for example, with the latest round of uh, vaccine. And I love, as I said, I love to point to the evidence so that nobody can say, boy, you know, him is a PNP, so I'm just making the government look bad, you know? <laughs> uh, the, the, the fact of the matter is that the, 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 the vaccines that were provided no specific uh, target were set mm -hmm. or made out for persons with disabilities. And I have had discussion with the government and, and spoken to them about it because based on the CDC guidelines, mm -hmm. persons with disabilities should have been among the priority, the priority. priority groups. Mm -hmm. And that um, was not the 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 case although you have some persons with disabilities who are senior citizens who end up getting vaccinated you know but it's not as if there was a specific target that was set for uh persons with disabilities like oh you had specific targets set for uh senior citizens and the government had uh, they had uh uh, a, a, a grant program that they gave uh, financial assistance to individuals during the COVID pandemic. And uh, some persons with disabilities got some funds out of that um, uh, uh, as well. And so I have to commend them where that is concerned. Okay. Now, another thing with the government and COVID, when it comes to you, you know we in Jamaica depends on tourism. In your estimation, did we open up too soon or what? When it comes to tourists. Well, you know, at some point in time, considerations would have to be given to the, um, the economy and the lifeblood of our economy is tourism and i don't know if i can say that the tourism opening up the tourism sector has contributed to the increase in our covid uh pandemic um numbers i don't the evidence the evidence that i have at my fingertips is not pointing uh, to that. The majority of the uh, transition that has taken place is uh, from our ordinary Jamaicans who oh, are ordinary ones. Okay. 
who have traveled uh, overseas and return and venture back into their own communities and ignore the uh, guidelines. So know? we have been our, our, our own worst enemy then, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And here I want to appeal to my Jamaican brothers and sisters who travel you know, that when you travel, man, just adhere to the protocols, man. If you come back home, just quarantine for a period and, you know, make sure that all of us are safe. It doesn't make any sense for you to go out there in the community and inoculate everybody and then decide to come. All right. Senator, uh, by the way, ladies and gentlemen who have logged in, we have here with us Senator Dr. Floyd Morris, who has done yeoman service with the government, and he is, we're going to talk about his involvement with the UN and CARICOM in a minute. Yes, Floyd, mm -hmm. you have moved up the ranks very quickly. You have moved up the ranks very quickly, and we know that you were recently appointed to the UN committee. Can you give us a little background on that? What's this committee in aid of? What's the purpose? And how, how are things going? Okay, well, um, in, in, in 2007, the United Nations established the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. This is a committee, a, a convention that is responsible for protecting the over 1 billion individuals with disabilities across the world. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, Did I hear that number right? Yes. Yes, one billion, over one billion. Uh, Fifteen percent of the global population has a disability. Whoa. Yes, uh, and and that is um, based on the last survey that was done by the World Health Organization in 2011. And so, the, the committee has a major responsibility in terms of protecting and ensuring the protection of the equal rights and dignity of persons with disabilities. And uh, it, there are 180 countries that have signed and ratified the treaty. Treaty, okay. Uh, and the, these, the, 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 the convention makes provision for a body of experts to be elected mm -hmm. to um, monitor the implementation of the, con uh, the, the convention globally. Okay. And there are 18 members, experts from across the world that are a part of this committee. And in November 2020, I was elected as one of the... 18 experts from across the world on that uh, committee. And just wow. to indicate... So, wait, of 180 countries? Yes. You're in that 18? Yes. 18. But most definitely. Most wow, definitely. and for more from Bill Israel, that is, <laughs> that is a fantastic achievement. Uh, we are proud of you. Yes, we yes. Proud of you. So, 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 uh, so I have become the second graduate of St. Mary High following the footstep of Professor Verin Shepherd, mm -hmm. the, the second St. Mary High student to be elected to a UN committee. To a UN committee. Yes, yes. Wow. So I, 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 I was pointing out that the government of Jamaica, this is how the process works, uh -huh. the government of Jamaica would nominate um, an individual who they believe is eminently qualified in the field and they would give their campaign support uh, for uh, the individual. They have to lobby the other countries across the world. And um, so I was nominated from Jamaica by the government of Jamaica. Okay. And based on my profile, based on the extensive work that I've done in terms of research, uh, in terms of advocacy and all of that sort of stuff for persons with disabilities in the region and Jamaica, you know, the world bought into it and I was elected in November 2020. 
All right. And even and even with the new Jamaica, the new JP government, you still will hold that post. Absolutely, because it was it was the JLP government that nominated me in the first wow. instance. Wow. I wish we could have this nonpartisan <laughs> thing yes. in every yes. aspect. Uh, you're also the rapporteur for the for CARICOM. What right. is it all about? Can you explain that? Well, what happened is that in 2013, uh, CARICOM developed what they call a roadmap the Declaration of Patientville, a mm. roadmap to chart a course for development of persons with disabilities in the Caribbean. And coming out of that uh, roadmap, they had to establish an office with someone who would help to push and drive the disability uh, agenda within the region mm -hmm. and once again the pendulum stuck on me you know <laughs> um, and so I was uh, appointed as the CARICOM first uh, rapporteur in 2018. All right all right with all this talk about treatment of persons with disabilities Senator Jamaicans I don't think we have paid enough attention to disabilities and people with disabilities. As a disabled, as a person with, who is visually impaired, and there are others who are deaf or whatever, how do you, how do you want to be treated? Do you want to be treated with, with sympathy or what? Explain it to me. How do you guys feel? Well, certainly not sympathy, mm -hmm. you know. Um, one can be empathetic, you know, understand that we are human beings just as anyone else. Mm -hmm. And if we get the support systems in place, we can participate and function as normal as possible in society on an equal basis with others. And so, you know, how, how the, the globe is viewing disability now is a situation where individuals who have an impairment, whether it be deafness, physical disability, blindness, mental illness, we see it as the barriers that are there in society that restrict the participation of individuals with the impairment in society. All and right, so those... let me ask you something here, Senator. Yes. What changes would you like to see in say, let's first, education. What changes would you like to see in education to facilitate the people with disabilities? Well, we'd like to see that the, the educational facilities are accessible physically to mm -hmm. persons with disabilities. We'd like to see teachers trained and equipped to relate to persons with uh, disabilities in the regular education system. We'd mm -hmm. like to see the schools equipped with the ne necessary technological support for uh, students with disabilities. We would like for provision to be made that if a person with disabilities is in the classroom and need support, that their shadows are, um, are there to give support to those uh, individuals. And we want to make sure that the students, regular students, are sensitized to understand that disability is not a contagious disease. You, right. can, you can have a blind person in the classroom that, the, the, I mean, the blindness won't be transmissible. It won't be transmitted to, to you as a, as a, as a non-disabled person. <laughs> Yeah. What? Okay. Since you are you are also the spokesman for the how is it Ministry of Labor and Social Security, what changes would you like would you like to see in the workplace? I I, I, I got, we got muffled there because of the connectivity situation here. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let me repeat. You are the spokesman for the opposition for the Minister of Labor, Ministry of Labor and yes. Social Security. What changes would you like to see in the Jamaican workplace? Well, I mean, and, and, and straight up, I'm going to be batting for persons with disabilities because right, right, that's what I mean. right now, 
I mean, based on the last data that we have, about 90% of the population of persons with disabilities are unemployed. Oh my gosh, this is just I had some difficulty. We seem to be having some difficulty with the connection with Senator Morris. With Senator Morris, his feed just went off. His feed just totally went off. We are hoping we'll be able to reconnect. But, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who are just logging in, we were here speaking. I was here speaking with Senator Dr. Floyd Morris of the People's National Party. Everybody. Was really about why he is a black senator. He was once the president of the Senate of Jamaica and he's a new and UN representative for the community of the disabilities. We were just going through everything uh, item by item. I know some people are getting very impatient about this whole thing and said, Mary, I hope we're coming to that. We have that on the agenda. He has that there ready and we're hoping he can log back on again. We are hoping he will come back on because right now his feed is gone. And Diana says I'm breaking up so I don't know if it's something wrong with the internet. The whole internet has just suddenly disappeared. But I know people like Aubrey, I know you're very patient. Yes, we had that. I wanted to clear everything out of the way first. Politics, the whole disability education before we with the safety we had issue. That's coming up, and I hope he comes back on again. I hope he'll be able to join us because just before we went on, we were having some problems with the connection. He's having good kids. So, guys, when you look at what he has accomplished, I don't know how many of you have ever thought of having a clock that I for half an hour. Which is what blindness is all about. But man, that must be something real traumatic. That must be really, really traumatic. I don't know how how blind people handle that. If you have people with any disability, that must be really traumatic. And for him to go through high school, not pass a single subject, then go on to get his master's. That is a fantastic thing. How is the order coming across to you guys? I hear that uh, breaking up badly. It has to be something with the internet because we lost this feed. And now I hear that this is it's breaking up. Okay, I think he's coming back on again. Yes, Dr. Morris, we're back. Hello, can you hear me, sir? Dr. Morris, we're back on. Can you hear me? Dr. Morris, can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me now? I, I am hearing you now. Good, 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 good. Yes. We were, I was asking about the changes you'd like to see in business for the people with disabilities. Would you mind finish, finishing up what you were starting to say? We're having a problem, guys. His feed is frozen again. And now he's gone. <laughs> the, he's gone again playing hide and seek. He's back again. The feed is back up again. Yes, I'm hearing you now. Are you hearing me, Dr. Morris? You're hearing me? I guess he's trying to come back in. He's trying to come back in, but I don't think the internet is allowing him to. But guys, this was, was going to be like the final part before we got into the St. Mary High stuff. But I think we have to be patient and we have to be a bit respectful of the man and his achievements. But he has that down, guys. We spoke about this before and he knows what we're going to be touching on. But just give him some time. Let's see if we can get him back up again and running. So can somebody in the text tell me how my voice is coming across? So I know it's either my system or just the internet itself. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to Rock the Mic. And we had with us 
Senator Dr. Floyd Morris of the People's National Party, former president of the Senate. And like he was saying, he, this guy has led a hard life. I wonder how many of us could have dealt with what he dealt with. Can you imagine that as a teenager, 16, 17, maybe 18, now you have to go learn Braille? Oh my gosh, that must have been tough. That must have been tough. But we were hoping to finish up this section about his involvement with disability to get to what we're really here for, guys, what most of you are really here to listen to, and that's about our alma mater, St. Mary High. So with Dr. Morris, I basically share three things. One, I'll link Pomer Primary. Two, St. Mary High, and three, Michael. So we are tight. We knew each other as boys coming up, playing different sports together. His mom was, like he said, one of the biggest activists I have ever known for any political party. Any political party. Those are the days when politics was fun. Not so anymore. And I really wanted to ask him about that. Here he's trying to get on again. Yes, man. Yes, I, you're I, back. Good. <laughs> I, I, I'm not leaving until we finish it up. All right, go ahead. So changes in labor, in the labor force. How would you like to see the people with disabilities being provided for? Well, definitely we, we have to make sure that the... The, 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 the workplace becomes accessible because that is the major issue. And then you have to give the technological support because the technology is what is going to bridge the gap between persons with disabilities and the non-disabled uh, uh, population. And then information has to be provided in an accessible format for persons with disabilities so that they are able to uh, interact with the non-disabled uh, individuals on a consistent basis. So those are some of the issues that have to be addressed at the workplace. At the workplace, okay. Yes, Senator, thanks for that rundown. Now, we get to another very important thing. As a man who wore that green and gold, as a man who wore that green and gold, yes. you live by the motto, faith and courage. I'm Absolutely. sure we're well aware of the plight or alma mater is in. Mm -hmm. I mean, the school needs a lot of work when it comes to the physical plant itself. And with COVID, we have students who are in dire need of, you know, tablets, computers, phones, whatever. What can you as, or how can you as a senator, former senator, help us out with this? Well, you know, St. Mary High School has been are uh, very near and dear to me and as i've indicated over the years i've assisted with their debating team uh when i was um at the university i have gone back and spoken at uh different uh prize giving ceremonies and graduations at the institution and last year i made a commitment um, to the organization, to the past student organization for uh, a $50,000 contribution for the next five years uh, um, for, you know, different things that the organization is involved in. And, you know, I, I, I really believe that the school has done well and continues to do well. It is the leading academic institution on the northern, uh, northern front of the island. And we recently won Eastern Championship. And I was having a discussion with uh, the incoming chairman for the board of the high school and also former outstanding uh graduate and uh, uh, media mogul gary allen as to how we can bolster 
and give greater support to the institution. And we have some discussion going on that. And I certainly one of the events that I have spoken to the chairman of the board uh, of governors for the school, uh, Mr. Derek Thompson, mm -hmm. uh, I, I said to him that we have to bring back the annual fair um, that was there at the school and used as a fundraising activity. And if we can get all the past students to chip in and give a contribution to that uh, event and make it a major fundraising activity each year, I am certain that we'll be able to buy the bus that we want to purchase. We'll be able to uh, assist needy students that are there at the institution and we'll be able to assist in whatsoever renovations that are there. All right. Uh, stick up in there, stick up in there, uh, Senator. Here, we have a lot, how should I say now? Since we have been in operations since 1960, we yeah. have produced hundreds, thousands of graduates. Mm -hmm. What do you think, in your estimation, what do you think we can do to pull the alumni together, to pull the past students together, so that those who are blessed with plenty can help us out? Uh, here's the thing, and I'm, get, I'm getting a lot of comments coming in. From the past students, we have people like, we have doctors, we have lawyers. And we have uh, three capable politicians with yourself, Dr. Guy, and Bobby Montague. Mm -hmm. Isn't there, level with me, isn't there anything you guys can do to help facilitate us getting a bus? Like, I, I don't know if you want to, can you help us getting some communication with, say, Toyota or this new Chinese company that provides buses? Because... Honestly, I heard the other day that Manning's got a bus. Mm -hmm. Alverne got a bus. And these schools should be, come on, can you help out, please? I'm, I'm making an appeal well, to you. What, what, a what, what, man, what, my primary man, Mirzai man. Can you help us out, Senator? What, what, what happens with these um, other institutions is mm -hmm. that they work in tandem with the local dealership of these uh, or suppliers of these buses mm -hmm. in tandem with their old students association um because you see a lot of the successful schools like kingston college mannings monroe J st jago a lot of these schools the success of these institutions are hinged on a strong and vibrant old student association true and 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 what we have to do we have to we have to we are now 61 years old mm -hmm. and we have to get all the graduates from these years in a centralized database some of them would have passed on but we have to get everybody in a centralized database where they are, what, what is their telephone number, email address. And if everybody should decide that they were going to give $10,000, just $10,000 a year, you know, if, I, I, I estimate, I estimate that on average since 1960, mm -hmm. we would have graduated about uh a uh, hundred on average at right? um students it probably is more yeah more right? than she... um especially in recent times and if you do the mathematical calculation and you have over uh ten thousand graduates over that period of time uh and you ask each each graduate to give ten thousand dollars a year. It's a it's a whole lot of money that you would have. Um, it's a lot, yes, yeah, true. You know, and that would be able to assist with uh, different things. Now, as it relates to us who are in the political realm, certainly, uh -huh. certainly, we could uh, make um, an approach to the 
the, the dealers to um, get uh, a bus at a reduced rate because they are going to want to, they are going to want to know um, you know how 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 they would be compensated for uh, the the asset that they will take into the island. But certainly we can look at how, what. Uh, duties can be reduced um, for uh, for such a facility, you know, um, and 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 get it and get it much ch cheaper, right? Because a a a a, a, a thirty seater uh, would cost anywhere uh, about ten thirteen million dollars there about. Yes, we were uh, at a price of one hundred and eighteen thousand US. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Well, I mean, any reduction, any reduction in that? Yes. Well, along with helping us. So, so I mean, de definitely, I'm going to speak with uh, Maurice and uh, and Bobby and see what can be done in 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 that uh, regard. Um, but I, I I tell you as well that you know there has to be a, a, an intensification of the effort to strengthen the old student association and it has to be deliberate it has to be systematic we have to get somebody or bodies who is going to be pulling this database together from all the years uh -huh. and and probably assign marshals from each year to say that you know uh gary is from the class of 78 so gary would know where a lot of those uh 78 ers are i mean i'm from the class of 86 i know that there is a whatsapp group with mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the 86ers on it um you know so it's just to make sure we had a strategic approach and pull all of these individuals together in a centralized database and then as i point out there has to be a rallying point, an annual rallying point, where we get these individuals, where they look forward to um, uh, a, a, an event for um, a reunion. So okay. I, 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 I spoke about the annual fair that was held sometime in April, you know, to make sure that we get um, uh, some fund, funds in the kitty for uh, the different projects that we are doing. You know, so I, 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 I am prepared to give whatsoever support. Yes, we, yes, yes. <laughs> we're gonna need it. And we have one person who is asking if, is there any way in your, how should I say, UN diplomatic <laughs> realm you could you know, liaison with us and the embassy of, say, the Chinese or the Japanese, if they could, you know, help out. Help out. Well, I mean, I, 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 I put it this way. I will try whatsoever I can to assist in, 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 in this uh, regard, right? Um, okay. But there are, other, there are other ways... Yes, I agree. Mm -hmm. we, can, we can assist, um, you know, in terms of uh, doing what we can for 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 the school because the school is going to need support in terms of technology as well. It's not as just well, yep. mm -hmm. us, you know, because um, you know I have to. One of the things that former member of parliament uh, Horace Clark did was to set up that uh, information technology. Uh, um the lab at the school which was one of the first in the in, in the country and the, the the current member of parliament has expanded on that and we have to keep on improving and modernizing it because the school has done this extremely well where information and communication technology is concerned and we have to move to the point where every student at the institution have a tablet you know, and I am certain that if every past student uh, should say, all right, let, let me give as a gift 
a donation mm -hmm. of a tablet to um, each student registered at the institution, that would be a major, major boost for yes, that's our major that's our major problem. Trying to get everybody, you know, everybody together. It is a struggle. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> well, we are trying, we are really trying. But I know that the school needs a lot of help in other areas. But my main my main area I'm focusing on, like I have told everybody is a bus. My main goal is to get a bus coming. Yes, I know we have technology and we the plant needs fixing up, but listen, Senator, I'm gonna be touching bases with you again because yes. I'm gonna, you know, like we say in Jamaica, like pitch here in a junk back. That's <laughs> <all> I'm, gonna <laughs> <do it. laughs> I'm gonna be like that with you. Because uh, honestly I need your help. And as soon as you start your family, I'm hoping that that first kid has to come to St. Mary High. I want that yes. book to be there for yes. him. Yes. Right? Yes. Yes. So, yes. Senator, we will get back to you again. And we're not finished with this, but I'm hoping, I know you're a man of your word, and I know you're going to help us out, and we will accept any help we can. But we'd like to use your voice as a rallying cry to basically bring everybody together. Yes. Most of them not listening to listen to little me, but when they hear it coming from Senator Dr. Floyd Morris, I'm sure they respond. So yes. we're hoping you can help us out in that respect. Yes. But Floyd, yes. Senator, it's been great. It's been great talking to you. Yeah, man. I uh, it was. That you decided to come on tonight. I know you give up a lot <laughs> just yes. to be on tonight, but brother. I'm looking for great things from you, greater things from you. And yes. I know you're going to keep rising up. I know you're going to keep climbing that ladder. Yes. And all the best for you, your family, your party. Yes. So, one, 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 one other thing, as before we go, Gary, uh -huh. we, can, we can probably, we can probably, uh, during this pandemic, the Zoom technology has uh, done human service to uh -huh. communication. And we probably need to have what I call a Zoomathon, you know, um, where we link up St. Mary High Pass students from all over the world and, uh, you know, try to get uh, a commitment from them towards the different causes. So you, know, mm -hmm. um, you know, and then from there, we can start a mobilizing point, you know. Uh, so once we set up uh, the the Zoom link, we, I mean, Zoom can accommodate up to a thousand people, yes. mm -hmm. dependent on um, what what you you are doing, and we can start something from there. You know, um, I'll, I'll, put, I'll put it out there, and we set a date, and we see, you, you know, what we can work up from there, and see how far we can go. Yes, yes. I want, I want, I'm counting on you though, because I want you to put the other two politicians to. Yes. As a Bailesville man, I know you can do it, all right? <laughs> all right. Well, definitely. I mean, um, by tomorrow, I'll send them an email. All right. You know, please, um, please do send it. And follow up, all right? All right. All right. Blessings. And tell your wife many thanks for yes. allowing us to bore you. And all the best, sir. Thanks a lot. No, no problem. Man. No problem. Thank and you, heal, heal up massive for me and everybody. <laughs> all, all right. right. Well, thank you, man. Okay. Bye. All right, guys, it's been a great evening, great talking to Senator Morris, and we'd like to thank him for taking time out. And he gave up a lot to be here this evening because, I mean, he was just rushing to get back to the computer this evening. We, he logged on a minute or two late. But, guys, I've known Floyd for years, and I know he's a man of his word. He's going to help out. I'm sure of that. So much respect to Senator Morris and guys, thanks for logging in. Thanks for listening. Thanks for being with Rock the Mic. And like he said, we're gonna be looking about that telethon or Zoomathon. I'm gonna put the date out there and see if we can get hundreds to log on and to make a commitment. So ladies and gentlemen, as we come to an end, thank you very much for being with me. Peace out. Take care. God be with you. 